Hi everyone, welcome to a new lesson. In today's session, we'll look at lesson 49, the end of a dream. 大家好，今天呢，我们学习第四十九课 ，the end of a dream， 美梦告终。The story took place in Tehran. 今天这个故事呢，发生在德黑兰。As usual, before you look at the flash, I want you to look at key words and expressions first. Tired. Tehran. 这个词的发音要注意 ，h 是不发音的。Tehran. Spring. Mattress. A gust of wind. Sweep. Courtyard. Smash. Miraculously. Unheard. Glance. Promptly. Again, I'd like to give you three questions. Follow these questions, and you'll get the main idea of the story. 好，下面呢，我们来看看这些问题。Question number one: What did a young man in Tehran buy for the first time in his life? 这位在德黑兰的年轻人，平生第一次买了一样什么东西 ？Question number two: What happened on the third night? 在故事中的第三个晚上发生了什么事情 ？Question number three: What happened to the young man at the end of the story? 故事的最后，在年轻人身上发生了什么事情？ Tired of sleeping on the floor, a young man in Tehran saved up for years to buy a real bed. For the first time in his life, he became the proud owner of a bed which had springs and a mattress. Because the weather was very hot, he carried the bed. Onto the roof of his house, he slept very well for the first two nights, but on the third night a storm blew up. A gust of wind swept the bed off the roof and sent it crashing into the courtyard below. The young man did not wake up until the bed had struck the ground. Although the bed was smashed to pieces, the man was miraculously unhurt. When he woke up, he was still on the mattress. Glancing at the bits of wood and metal that lay around him, the man sadly picked up the mattress. And carried it into his house. After he had put it on the floor, he promptly went to sleep again. The story sounds a bit incredible, doesn't it? 这个故事听起来有点不可思议，是不是 ？But believe it or not, that's what happened in the story. 但是不管你相信还是不相信，故事里发生的就是这样。好，下面呢，我们先看看问题，大家一起来试着回答。What did a young man in Tehran buy for the first time in his life? 这位在德黑兰的年轻人平生第一次买了一件什么东西 ？This young man bought a bed which had springs and a mattress. 这位年轻人呢？买了一张有弹簧和有垫子的床。What happened on the third night? 故事中的第三个晚上发生了什么事情呢 ？A gust of wind swept the bed off the roof and sent it crashing into the courtyard below. 
。第三个晚上，刮起了一阵大风，这个大风呢，把这个床从屋顶上刮下来，把它摔碎到下面的院子里。What happened to the young man at the end of the story? 到了故事的最后，在年轻人身上发生了什么事情 ？Although the bed was smashed to pieces, the young man was miraculously unhurt. 虽然这张床呢摔了一个稀巴烂，但是这个年轻人却是分毫未伤。Okay. That's it for the questions and answers. Now let's look at the language points. 下面我们一起看一看语言点 Tired of sleeping on the floor, a young man in Tehran saved up for years to buy a real bed. 德黑兰的一个年轻人，由于对睡地板感到厌倦了，于是呢攒了多年的钱买了一张真正的床 Save up. 意思是攒钱，这是一个固定词组。Tired of sleeping on the floor 是一个分词短语，在句子中做元音状语。那么这个句子也可以换一种方式来表达。A young man in Tehran saved up for years to buy a real bed because he was tired of sleeping on the floor. Be tired of 这里呢，省略了一个 being。Be tired of 的意思是对什么东西感到厌倦。我们来看一个例句 ：When one is tired of London, one is tired of life。这句话的意思是，当你厌倦了伦敦，你也就厌倦了生活。这是英国一位著名的作家说的话。Because the weather was very hot, he carried the bed onto the roof of his house. 这一句中 ，on to 这两个介词也可以连写，意思是到什么什么上。它表示朝某一个位置移动的这么一个介词。我们来看一下例句。The cat. Jumped onto the chair. 这只猫跳上了椅子。He stepped out of the train onto the platform. 他走下火车，来到了站台上。这里的 onto 都表示位置的移动，到什么上面。A gust of wind swept the bed off the roof and sent it crashing. Into the courtyard below. 一阵大风把这个床从屋顶上刮了下来，把它摔碎到下面的院子里。在这个句子中要注意介词和 sweep 这样的搭配使用。另外，这个句子中还有一个结构是一个比较难的用法，是动词 send 加上名词，再加分词。这么一种结构，它也可以用 send 加上名词，再加上介词 into 或者是 to。它表示呢，使什么处于某种状态。在这个句子中是 send the bed crashing， 也就是说使床处于一种摔碎的状态。下面我们再看看 send 加名词再加介词的用法。The news sent him into a rage. 这个消息使他大为恼火。这里 send somebody into 这样一个结构。The song sent the child to sleep. 这首歌使这个孩子睡着了。The young man did not wake up until the bed had struck the ground. 这个年轻人直到这张床砸到了地上才开始醒过来。句子中的 not until 这样的一个结构，表示直到什么什么才怎么样。
had struck， 是因为发生在 wake up 之前，所以呢用的是过去完成时态。我们再看看下一个语言点 ，glancing at the bits of wood and metal that lay around him。The man sadly picked up the mattress and carried it into his house. 这个年轻人看了一眼周围的碎木片和碎金属片，伤心的捡起了床垫，把它拿进了屋。Glancing at the bits of wood and metal that lay around him 是一个现在分词短语，在句子中表示伴随状况。Glance at something, 意思是匆匆的看一眼什么东西。比如 ，He glanced at his watch. 他看了一眼表。Glance 这个词强调的是看这一动作。我们以前学过 glimpse 这个词。Glimpse 呢，表示瞥见什么，强调呢是看的结果。请大家注意一下区分。Bits of something, 意思是什么东西的碎片。这里呢，我们顺便给大家再介绍一个短语 ，bits and pieces， 意思是零碎东西 ，bits and pieces。另外，还要请大家注意一下，句中的 lay 是 lie，l i e lie 的过去式，请大家注意一下 ，right。That's it for the language points. Now we'll look at the key structures and usage. 在今天的关键句型部分，我们要来看一看分词的用法，分词短语的用法。请大家看看课文中的这些有分词短语的句子。Tired of sleeping on the floor, a young man in Tehran saved up for years to buy a real bed. 这里的分词短语呢？刚才我们在讲语言点的时候已经提出来过，是 tired of sleeping on the floor。be tired of 是一个词组，那么这里呢是省略了 being。sleeping 是句子中的动名词，是跟在介词 of 后面的动名词。再看下一个句子 ，glancing at the bits of wood and metal that lay around him。The man sadly picked up the mattress and carried it into his house. Glancing at the bits of wood and metal, 是现在分词短语，做句子中的伴随状况。除了分词短语的用法以外，我们还要大家看一下由连词连接一个分句构成的一个复合句的句型结构。Because the weather was very hot, he carried the bed onto the roof of his house. 这里呢是有连词 because 引导的一个原因状语从句。The young man did not wake up until the bed had struck the ground. 在这个句子中的连词是 until. Although the bed was smashed to pieces. The man was miraculously unhurt. 那么在这个句子中呢，连词 although 引导出一个状语从句。看完这个故事，大家有什么感觉呢 ？Well, I think it was really a miracle that the young man was unhurt. 这个故事的结尾，年轻人居然没有伤着，简直是个奇迹。It was really a miracle. Miracle 意思是奇迹。The springs and mattress of the bed saved the young man's life. 这个床的床垫子和弹簧呢，救了这年轻人一命。这倒也不亏了他积攒多年的钱买了这张床。Well, the young man did not seem to realize that he had had a narrow escape. 可是这个年轻人似乎没有意识到，他不过是侥幸躲过了一场灾难。注意，这里有一个短语 ，have a narrow escape， 意思是侥幸躲过了一场灾难的意思。我们讲过，课文的故事呢，发生在德黑兰。Tehran is the capital of Iran， 是伊朗的首都。
The weather is hot and dry in summer. 在伊朗呢，夏天又干又热。那么，在这个课文里边，我们可以看出来 ，the climate affects the kind of house and furniture people have. 这个天气呢，也可以影响到人们有什么样的住什么样的房屋，以及呢，他们用什么样的家具。The climate affects the kind of houses and furniture people have. Well. That brings us to the end of our lesson today. See you next time. Goodbye.